In the headlines, Health Minister withholds details on the outcome of the report on the first COVID-19 related death. Curfew extended for a further two weeks. Expansion and refurbishing of Bishop's College on schedule for completion by March 2022. Victim of car scratching incident declines to pursue legal action against radio personality Aruna Neptune. Tam CC lists accessibility to tools for online learning and students no show to classes as challenges facing the institution. Let's say good evening to Trelana Charles. Tonight in Around the Globe, Cuba is partnering with Iran to produce a new COVID-19 vaccine. Concerns about sharks continue across the region. And we take a look at talks of marijuana decriminalization in Guyana. In sports, the Super 50 Cup returns. Grenadian Devon Smith assigned as assistant coach for Windward Island Volcanoes and Grenada Netball Association prepares to elect a new executive. Details right after this message. Hi, I'm Francis Urias Peters. I'm a good listener and K105 has always been a great source of education and entertainment. Now while the station name may have changed over the years, it has always provided valuable information which enabled me as a playwright to document and to celebrate our history, our behavior and our achievements. K105 is my choice. It's the national station. Good evening, this is GBN's News at 7. No details are forthcoming on Grenada's first COVID-related death. Chris Lena John tells us more. Minister for Health Nicholas Steele appeared a bit hesitant in providing details on the outcome of the first COVID-19-related death investigation. The committee was appointed almost one month ago to conduct investigation into the circumstances surrounding this first COVID-19 related death. The committee has been given time to determine all the facts and present a report to Cabinet. He gave an update during Tuesday's post-Cabinet briefing. I have received the report. The report has been passed on to Cabinet. Um, and from there, the, the report comes with recommendations that are already being adopted uh, within our system, um, and we will move forward from there. It was promised that the public will be made aware of the results of the investigation. What we will do is, is, is um, share a synopsis of it and, and those recommendations. I think that's, that's reasonable for us to, to, to present to you on, and to the public the lessons learned and, 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 and wherever there were lessons to be learned and whatever changes may have been made and whatever uh, systems have been verified to, to be functioning properly or so. So we will get that to you. The deceased was a 72-year-old man who arrived from the United States on December 16th last year. Christina John, GBN News. Health Minister Nicholas Steele says government is aggressively pursuing the procurement and rollout of COVID-19 vaccines. He said within days, more information will be shared with the Grenadian people. First and foremost is, is for us to identify the specific vaccine or vaccines that we will be using. What I would say right now, um, based on the information we have in our procurement process, and so we're looking at the Pfizer vaccine and we're looking at the AstraZeneca vaccine. We believe that it will most likely end up being one of those two or both of those. And I am hoping that it can happen as soon as February. With the recent spike in COVID cases in neighboring islands such as St. Vincent and the Grenadines with its record outbreak of 600 active cases, Barbados 800 and St. Lucia approximately 400, health officials say it has become even more important to secure the country's borders as well as secure vaccines. The health minister says they have beefed up border control measures as a means of protecting citizens, especially those those on the northern side of the island. We have to take additional measures to control our border between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Grenada, in particular Caraco and Pitti Martinique. Extra resources have been placed. Additional Coast Guard vessel has been sent up to patrol that area. So there are now two Coast Guard vessels uh, in between uh, Caraco and Pitti Martinique. 
Additional persons have been put on the ground in terms of wardens at Piti Martinique and Karakou. And there are uh, widespread testing occurring now uh, from the team in Karakou, as well as significant sensitizing of the population. Details are emerging about the circumstances surrounding the death of a prisoner at the General Hospital. Reports from the prison indicated that the inmate was hospitalized after allegedly slitting his throat over the weekend. Today, GBN was informed by a family member that the prisoner was suffering from cancer and that he eventually succumbed to his illness. According to her, an autopsy revealed that medics discovered a large tumor on his liver we were informed that the cancer had spread to several organs, including his heart, intestines, and pancreas. The family member told GBN that they have nothing but praise for officers at Her Majesty's prison. In fact, she has requested that the GBN on the family's behalf extend sincerest appreciation to the commissioner and staff, who spared no effort in ensuring that he received the best possible treatment whenever the need arose. She explained that on several occasions he needed to receive medical attention at the general hospital, and that prison officials ensured that the emergency response teams were called and that he received excellent care. We at the GBN extend sincerest condolences to the family. With the significant rise in the number of positive COVID cases in neighboring islands, one may say Grenada remains in good standing. However, government is taking no chances as they continue to err on the side of caution. The curfew period has been extended for a further two weeks. More in this report. The Ministry of Health on Tuesday said they are awaiting results of samples sent to CAFO for testing for the COVID-19 variant. To date, there are no signs of the new variant of COVID in Grenada, unlike other Caribbean islands where it has surfaced in the past weeks. According to assistant to the chief medical officer, Mayana Charles, results should be available in two weeks. It was also announced by Minister Nicholas Steele during Tuesday's press brief that curfew has been extended for another two weeks. So this is why you will find for this week, or at least for the next two weeks, the curfew from 10 p.m. will remain between 10 and 5 a.m. And we, I do understand and hear the calls from individuals who are saying, as Dr. Charles has said, um, that there are no active community cases, cluster cases in Grenada, that all of the cases um, that we have picked up are travel-related and in quarantine. According to him, there was no positive cases of the virus detected during the last 24 hours. While we want to, to and have always said that we want to find the balance between lives and livelihoods, we, at this point in time, based on what we see happening throughout the region, based on the changes we've seen with this virus, and most recent changes with this virus, we prefer to err on the side of caution point in time, we, we cannot find a way to accommodate uh, our curfew going later, i.e. more social activity with the risks the way they are right now. Uh, so we, are, we have recommended and Cabinet has accepted that the curfew remains from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m at least for the next two weeks. People shared their views on the extension, saying they have no issues with it. It's a great idea. It's, I don't have no problem with it because it's to protect us and to protect everybody else. So it's not, it's a good idea. Um, the six months what they were talking about, that was a good go, you know. Um, just before Carnival, like an in-island thing, we could think to keep the currency flowing and well, see, they say first line worker or whatever the case is, so I'm looking for better money. Others are not too happy about it and expressed why this is so. The two weeks of coffee again is a, is a real problem because of how much are we only have all this? 11 active cases in Grenada. Protect your borders and let the country run as it's supposed to because look, no work, nothing, and you're still up in a lockdown. It's most suffering for the, I mean, there are some are most suffering for me again more weeks of extended curfew that's basically too much for me it's a lot more than I could actually handle 
I can't get work right now. Everything, no nightlife. How could I work? To date, the country has recorded 148 cases of the COVID-19 virus, 75 females and 73 males. 70 of the 148 were imported, 136 recovered, and 11 active cases on island presently, all of which are imported. Christalina John, GBN News. The expansion and refurbishment of Bishop's College in Karaku began on August 31st and is expected to be complete by March 4th, 2022. Today, the project is on track and the construction of brand new structures is well on the way. Trelana Charles has this update. The teachers and students at Bishop's College in Kareku can look forward to a brand new educational facility. This $10.8 million project has been long anticipated and is scheduled to be complete in 2022. The expansion and refurbishment of the school, which is being undertaken by Hanover Construction Company Limited, falls under the Grenada Education Enhancement Project, an agreement between the government of Grenada and the Caribbean Development Bank. Project Supervisor Steve Gordon shared some of the plans for the new facility. Right, block A consists of um, a two-story concrete structure, which will be rehabilitated, two-story existing concrete structure, uh, block B consists of a proposed new two-story building structure which has been constructed from foundation. It's a new building. Block C consists of a two-story concrete structure which will be constructed from foundation also. Block A consists of the computer lab. It's a two-story block which consists of the computer lab and the audiovisual room. Block B consists of the Clothing and textile, principal office, uh, male and female toilet, the council room, multi-purpose lab, and also the food and nutrition room. Block C consists of mainly the classroom block, which will be two blocks, ground floor and first floor. He said the work being done on the school, which was in poor condition prior to the project's commencement, will be extremely beneficial to the educational journey of the students. I went through the, the existing property, the existing school compound, and I realized that um, the buildings, more than 90% of the buildings have been deteriorated. And I know for sure that have been affecting the students in terms of learning. And this new structure will be a more conducive and learning experience for them. In terms of learning experience, it will be more conducive and more comfortable for them. The project has also provided employment for 30 skilled and unskilled construction workers. And Gordon says the work may be done ahead of schedule. Uh, so far, the project is going fairly well. No challenges. We, we're also taking advantage of the weather because we're getting good weather for the past, we have been getting good weather for the past couple of months. And we're hoping to complete the job by, let's say, January, January 2022. The students, faculty and staff will soon be temporarily relocated to another location while work progresses. Reporting from Bishop's College in Kareku, I'm Trelona Charles. Such good news there. This is News at 7. Coming up, the story of a young girl on a drive to make a difference. Stay with us. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here even when the future seems unclear because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. New Year! Whoa! More games and more Money! Sunday, January 31st from 6 p.m. Get set for another massive online bingo! And this time you can win 10,000!
thousand US dollars. Ten thousand in ones. Tickets are ten US dollars. In Grenada, get your tickets at go to fed.com or box offices island wide. If you're overseas, tickets are only available at go to fed.com. Tell your friends and family about all the fun and excitement online. And the best part is you can play from the comfort of your own home. So what are you waiting for? Play Wacky Team Virtual Bingo! The new way to play bingo. <laughs> How going on, boy? Hey, hey, good old things. Hey, Daisy. Yeah. Boy, in line, boy. Your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about that thing. They were there with me every step of the way, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as a house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A for customer service. Oh, it's people from housing bad boy. Boy, not bad. Excellent. If you're thinking about constructing your home, why not consult the housing authority of Grenada? You could visit them right down in the Sandino complex or give them a call 440-1015 or 440-1016. Or check out their website, hag473.com. They go handle you. They go jog your blocks, they go draw your plan, they go talk your materials. <laughs> hey man, wait, wait. The Housing Authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you'll be there. Something in these moments lets me know you care. Maybe the way you shield me, maybe it's your smiles. And the way you tell me, it's okay to try. It's okay to look back if I am scared. I know you're there. Ooh. All right, sir. Together there's no limit to what we can do. This is Ariza, your financial freedom, your future. Running low on groceries? Why not visit realvalueiga.com and experience our new online shopping platform. Place your order, then go out and enjoy your day to spend more time with friends and family. Delivery available within select locations or in store pickup available. Sounds simple, right? It is. Stress less, live more with Real Value IGA Online Store, where good food begins. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years, a reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here even when the future seems unclear because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. An incident between two females, of which one is radio personality Aruna Neptune, led to two charges slapped against her on November 25th, 2020. However, having missed her first court appearance due to quarantine last week, when she showed up on Tuesday, the charges were dismissed. We get more in this report. Radio personality Aruna Neptune left the magistrate's court this morning without a conviction against her name. That's because the complainant told the court that she will not like to proceed further with the matter. Two months ago, Neptune was arrested and charged by officers of the Criminal Investigation Department on two counts of damage to property. She was accused of scratching a vehicle belonging to another woman. 
A legal official explained to GBN that if a complainant decides that they will not proceed with a matter or give evidence, they cannot be compelled by the police, which means that the lawmen will no longer have a case to sustain, and the charges will therefore fall by the way. Neptune was granted bail in the amount of $5,000, and the first hearing was scheduled for January 19, 2021, but was moved to January 26, as her lawyer stated that she was under quarantine. The day after her arrest, Neptune said she has had some time to reflect on her actions. Something would have transpired, and of course, you know, my whole thing is ownership, being responsible, being mature. To say, you know what? I messed up. And in hindsight, you probably say, you know what? I should have handled the situation differently or should have done this or done that. Because being here, I can understand the disappointment from some because, you know, they see you every day and they have you up there. And people expect certain things from you when you're in certain positions. So I can safely say that I'm disappointed in myself on that level because people expect you to vibrate higher. At the end of the day, when you're an adult, you're supposed to know how to handle things differently. And I really want to apologize to the individuals concerned because at the end of the day, this could have been handled differently. For GBN News, I am Rina Peh reporting. Now, this young lady you're about to hear about in this story may not be Grenadian by birth, but surely has the heart and values of a true Grenadian. Camille Richards, who is Grenadian by parental heritage, warmed the hearts of many children this winter season in Dallas, Texas, by trying to make a difference with her, quote, drive for displaced children. Rena Pear has more. The 10-year-old Camille Richards recently touched the hearts of many Grenadians and U.S. citizens with her Coat Drive initiative, which went viral on NBC Morning News. The initiative aims to donate winter coats to homeless children in the Texas area in her community. In an exclusive interview with GBN, Camille explains that the loss of jobs due to COVID-19 has left many families homeless, resulting in many children out in the cold with no winter coats to warm their bodies. She said that in each coat pocket, they would place an inspirational quote to give hope to each child. I came up with my initiative whenever I was leaving a local grocery store and I saw a homeless family and I really felt sorry for them. So I decided to make a change in our community so that children don't have to be out in the cold without a jacket uh, this winter. I feel like I've taught some people to uh, be considerate of their community because a lot of communities really need help in the winter season. I really want to show kids um, of, or of any age that they can achieve their goals and dreams and when they see something that's wrong, they can make a difference. So far, Camille and her classmates donated 161 coats to an NGO that caters to homeless children in her community with an intention to give more. She hopes that her initiative will inspire others. I think we're, we're going to keep collecting coats and try to get as much as we can. And then hopefully in the summer we can do a book drive. I feel like it's really important and I believe that if everybody does their part in giving back to their community, that this world will be a better place and it will be much kinder and we won't have to we won't have to see people suffering. I hope that across the globe people will be inspired to start uh, giving back to their communities and making changes in the world in the world because our young people are going to have to stand up and make differences. Camille's mother, Lisa Richards, who is from Lagoon Road in St. George, says she knows what it's like not to have much as a child. And as such, she always tries to teach her children to be compassionate of others and share. Well, I think that uh, growing up in Grenada, I've seen firsthand, you know, you know what poverty looks like. Um, and I realize that I have been very fortunate, you know, to raise Camille in this type of environment. And I want her to grow up knowing that there are others out there that are less fortunate in, in some situations, not just back home, but right here in our backyard in Dallas as well. And I just, my goal is just to make sure that 
she has a social conscience um, and has a heart for people. And anytime she is in a position to help, that she, she does exactly that. Both mother and daughter hope that this initiative will help others pause for a while and think about their neighbors or persons in need of help. For GBN News, I am Rina Peh reporting. Excellent. The full transition to online learning has been a challenge for the faculty and students at the TA Marichaux Community College. One college official tells GBN that the performances of students were affected in the initial phases by the move to full online learning, or in the case of the blended approach. Accessibility to tools for online learning was a major deterrent for students and their performances, especially those those who did not have access to high-speed internet, laptops, or tablets. Another challenge has been students no show to classes. Jara Joseph has the details. A major infringement to online learning and students' performance at TAMCC has been proper internet access with the bandwidth necessary. Corporate Communications Officer Christina Swan Awaga says even if students had the required tools, they did not have adequate internet bandwidth to follow the online classes and interact with lecturers and peers. She says this caused some students in the initial stages of the transition to online learning to not be able to attend some classes. However, moving along, even after now, we still have some form of um, blended learning taking place, etc. We still have some issues with students attending classes. Um, they do not attend the classes, a lot of them, for whatever reason or the other. It could mean that it's lack of devices. However, Tam CC have made provision for the students in the event that they do not have devices. So we have made labs available here at the college where students can come and attend the classes here. In a survey done by the college, the corporate communications officer says students found it difficult to adapt to learning new material on a new platform. We have made online academic research um, available for them through the library so that they can do their research online. We have also um, set up certain classrooms where if they have their own device, but however, do not feel comfortable, to be at home because of other distractions, they can be in certain specific rooms where they can access the device. Research resources normally found easily at the library were also not available, and students had to contend with online academic research, which also posed a challenge. This too, Ms. Awaga says, has been resolved. As it relates to the training platform, the distance learning coordinator would have, you know, extensively done quite a lot of training with the lecturers and also tried to offer assistance to students. So she would have um, uploaded something like a, a tutorial to help students understand how to navigate themselves through the platform and how to access information and how to also um, upload information. Contacting students also posed a challenge, whether by phone or email, which in some cases were totally ignored. This, she says, affected students' performance in regard to completing the curriculum and conducting exams initially. I am Jara Joseph for GBN News. And now we turn our attention to what has been creating a buzz on social media. Trelana Charles has been looking around the platforms. This is Social Buzz, where we shine a light on the thoughts and concerns of our online audience. The topic of legalizing marijuana has been ongoing for years. Minister of Agriculture Peter David said the legislation for the decriminalization of a certain quantity of marijuana has already been drafted. The first step will be decriminalization of a small amount. Secondly, there will be in the legislation a discussion on allowing cultivation of a small amount, meaning four trees, five trees, some countries have said four, some countries have said three, some have said five. We are going to, to go in that direction. And the third issue was the allowing of the Rastafarian, uh, Rastafarians in Grenada and the organizations to, 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 to use cannabis as a sacred 
sacramental uh, 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 offering. As always, our online audience were quick to give their opinions on the topic. Jose said, I think before the legislation, they should drop charges on young people who have been charged and carry a criminal record with them and those who are now serving time at the prison. This individual wrote, what many people are interested in is the ability to be able to import CBD oil for treatment of many illnesses. Sylvina had a different view. She believes legalizing marijuana would lead to more young people in the mental home. Nigel said marijuana is no longer a dangerous drug as long as there is money to be made for big boys. And Jennifer said with the world making marijuana legal, it will be big competition. Hopefully those small farmers who hope to earn get a fair chance in the market. Big producers always tend to dominate and benefit most. That's it for tonight's Social Buzz. As always, if you would like to have your thoughts and concerns shared, be sure to comment on GBN's Facebook page. From the thought process to the visual impact, it's time to take a peek through the GBN I saw lens. A good eye catches all. GBN I saw is brought to you by Clevision. You know us, but we knew. You feel at home with every visit. An experienced team offering personalized courtier service and trendy brand name lifestyle products. We're changing the vision care landscape one customer at a time. Clear Vision Eye Center. People and technology coming together to help you see the world with a clearer vision. We celebrate our customs officers in tonight's ISO. Our ISO reporter sent us pictures taken inside the Riverview Preschool where the teachers and parents showed their appreciation to our customs officers as they celebrate International Customs Day today. Annually held on January 26th, International Customs Day recognizes the role of custom officials and agencies in maintaining border security. Presenting the token is Miss Madonna, principal of the school, along with Mr. John Vice President of the PTA and teachers Gemma and Kizel. Send us your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp on 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. Very nice shout out to all the customs officers. Still ahead, youth officers and assistants learn more about the blended approach. This is News at 7. What are you looking for? Top quality copy paper? linen paper, bond paper maybe, or lunch bags, maybe a gift set, or maybe you're just not sure, then visit us today, Care Not Bookstore. We are so much more than your regular bookstore. Visit us at the corner of Scotch and Young Street, or give us a call, 420-5307, or 321 Care Not Bookstore, convenience, quality, excellent prices. Are you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox Center and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalanced hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449-7753 to find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment. Visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forledge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic. Detox your way to health. A message by the Grenada Distillers Limited. You want a hand sanitizer to do three things. Kill germs, be gentle, and to go where you go. You can get all of that in our hand sanitizer. Hard on germs, gentle on hands, affordable. Remember, hand sanitizers contain alcohol. Keep away from heat and flames and avoid contact with eyes. Available at retailers island-wide. A message by the Grenada Distillers Limited. 
eight doctors have been added to the team at the General Hospital to serve in various areas. Medical director at the hospital, Dr. Taisha Donald, says the doctors will assist in beefing up quality and urgent patient care. More in this report. Hospital Services is focusing on providing efficient and quality health care at the main hospital on the island. The General Hospital has an addition of eight doctors, together with the announcement that the laboratory has received new state-of-the-art equipment. The new doctors on our ward, it would help with um, patient care, quicker turnover of care, um, ensuring the whole plan is for us to improve on our human resource capacity, because recently we spoke a little bit about um, new equipment that the hospital would have procured, but in order to improve services, we need not only equipment, but we also need um, our human resource. Medical Director at the General Hospital, Dr. Taisia Donner, says they are slowly improving their human resource capacity by getting residency programs for doctors to specialize. And so, be able to offer more specialized services to Grenadians, and also we have given opportunity for junior doctors to be employed and so over time they too will develop different areas of interest and we will be seeking out specialty programs for them to improve their, their, their career and so to walk to study and come back again and soon. Dr. Donald is asking for patients while they improve hospital services. Communication is, is the key in ensuring that the population understands, you know, what is expected of them in the hospital services. And it's also for them also to, to have a good rapport with specialists and all the healthcare professionals in our system. And this is one of the things we want to, over, over time, improve on that relationship between the public and um, the personnel at our hospital. Of course, I mean, the public must understand that in hospital services, we do have, you know, some rules, especially now during this COVID-19 time. Three other doctors who are off island have returned and are volunteering at the hospital, while two have left for studies in Cuba. I am Gerard Wuzif for GBN News. Bringing youth officers and assistants within the Division of Youth Development up to speed on using the blended approach to provide quality service to the nation's youth was the aim of a recent session held by the Ministry of Education. We get the details of this initiative in this report. The session which was held at the Grenada Youth Center was facilitated by Information and Communications Technology Officer within the Ministry of Education, Jervis Dabrio. While addressing the participants on getting acquainted with the new normal, Dabrio made special mention of the fact that there are several limitations to virtual engagements, such as the use of the Zoom platform when hosting youth discussions. There are some discussions you will be able to have virtual, but the role play the making it real. You're not going to get that there. All right? And the management. You talk about it. But there is something about saying role play and one slap one, and now you realize that the block actually came to the class. While looking back at 2020 and the challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, Assistant Youth Officers Sean Thomas and Jason Moore shared their experiences and how they successfully used information technology to engage young people. It was excellent because, as I say, as a team, we sit down, we strategize how we're going to get our work done, and we did it as we planned. Using the Zoom methods, um, it was it was good. Um, many of the young people, as I said, they they didn't have the means to do it, but um, through help, maybe through community and um, sponsors, we were able to get them the devices that they needed to to go through the Zoom um, meetings, and it was very effective. In keeping with the COVID-19 protocols, several adjustments will be made for 2021 towards effectively executing the work of the Division of Youth Development's projects and programs. So says Community Youth Officer Janelle Adams, who added that while social engagement of the youth is needed at this time, adhering to the rules is equally important. Trying to... Um 
adjust plans to adapt with the COVID-19 protocols, but we have other activities where we can, other programs where we can meet the young people, even stuff like um, having youth quiz or youth, um, youth competition, um, like a marathon race, like, um, let's say, if we don't have sports this year, so we decided to do a marathon race with St. Andrew, St. Patrick's and St. David's, get a few young people. So at least we, in that, we're helping them, you know, really some of the tensions, right? So we, we decided to raise that, that, that awareness because we know how it feels to be just locked down. For GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. Stay with us, the weather and sports up next. Hey, 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 man, hey, man, hey, hey. Well, man, that's you, that's that Why do all this more? Things tight since COVID, you know. And Christmas coming, I had the toys to build, I had my house and my car to repair, and the wife wants you to go even. What you want me to do? I'm expect to do all that with more. Well, what you want me to do? Why do I go down my commune? You don't have to pay them until January. They have 20,000 in giveaway giving away, and the interest rate low, low, low. And listen to me, I try them orders and them, never lose good who they want them on. Well, watch, like, like you have more than your ass. Choose your loan at communal giving you the money for what you want to do. It's a loan for you. You know what? I'll get them a little try. Listen, listen. Where are you going on this month? Don't need it. Leave the mud, man. When you go down there, the rates low, low, low. Low, low, low. <laughs> This is GBN. We've got you covered. As we take a look at the weather, tonight's minimum temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. Weather is expected to be mainly fair, becoming partly cloudy at times with the chance of light showers. Winds northeasterly to east northeasterly at 8 to 18 miles per hour. Seas moderate, waves 5 to 7 feet in open water. A small craft advisory is in effect. Tides are low at 8 minutes past 9 in the evening and high at 12.29 a.m. As we look ahead, Wednesday's weather is expected to be partly cloudy at first, becoming generally fair by midday. And Thursday looks fair and sunny. Friday's weather is expected to be fair and hazy. That's it for the weather forecast right here on GBN News. Sporting fans, I'm Trelana Charles. The CG Insurance Super 50 Cup bowls off on Sunday, February 7, with the Leeward Hurricanes taking on the Windward's Volcanoes at the Coolidge Cricket Ground in Antigua. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, only 19 matches will be played in the tournament, scheduled to conclude on February 27. According to Cricket West Indies, the health risks related to the COVID-19 pandemic caused major disruption to all domestic cricket since late March 2020, with no competitive cricket allowed originally, except for an abridged version of the Caribbean Premier League, which took place last August in Trinidad. This year's annual CG Insurance Super 50 Cup will provide a platform for the region's six major cricketing rivals to clash in 19 action-packed 50-over matches
starting from Sunday, February 7, when Leeward Islands hurricanes host the Windward Islands volcanoes. The 2019 to 2020 champions, West Indies emerging players, are unable to defend their 2019 trophy due to COVID-19 restrictions. Meanwhile, veteran Grenadian cricketer Devon Smith is getting his feet wet in management after being recently assigned to the team management unit for the Windward's Volcanoes. Smith was not considered for selection for the CG Insurance Super 50 Cup, however will serve as an assistant coach with responsibility for batting. Five Grenadians were selected for the squad. Andre Fletcher as vice-captain, Roland Cato, Ryan John, Preston McSween, and Emmanuel Stewart as wicket-keeper. Head coach of the Windwards Volcanoes, Andrew Richardson, describes the process of selection. Yeah, we had um, a six or seven game series in December where players came from all the Windward Islands, you know. It's, you know, because of the, the COVID restrictions, we weren't able to have a Windward Islands tournament this year. So, you know, kudos to the office and um, Dwayne Gill and the staff for, you know, putting together that so we could have a look at, you know, emerging players and, you know, players who have haven't been, you know, who have done enough to, to, to earn a contract back with the winners. Have a look to see where they are so we could measure and make notes and to see where they need to improve and who needs to come back and who needs to move forward. So that was that was very good in December for those practice games. As you can see, we have brought back some of the guys to come back to be a part of these games. So it was it was very good in December as well. He says training post-COVID has been critical to that process. I think our post-COVID prep has been fairly good. Um, you know, I think the Grenada government has done a fantastic job in terms of, you know, controlling the, the, the outbreaks that, that happen from time to time. And, um, you know, that's something that is commendable on, on their part. Wherever they, they make any sort of adjustment, you know, to, to give us smaller groups, we, we do adjust and work accordingly. And I think that has been very good thus far. Um, no complaints with the preparations. It is good for us now to get out in the middle and, and get game prep, and it seems to be going good for today. Grenadian Mario Christopher has also maintained his position as the team's physiotherapist. The Grenada Netball Association is ushering in another term for a new executive to take the reins when it hosts its annual general meeting on Thursday. GBSS Auditorium is the location for the annual general meeting and only two representatives from each club are permitted to attend. Several candidates have put themselves up for election with Alison Miller, the sole candidate currently for president, while four persons will contend for the post of vice president. Two lady contenders are down for the position of secretary, as well as assistant secretary. That's it for sports. Up next, Around the Globe. Tonight's probe takes us around the region, where Cuba is taking the lead among Caribbean and Latin American countries in producing its very own COVID-19 vaccine. Its government has signed an agreement with Iran to carry out massive phase three clinical trials for one of its most promising candidates. Cuba does not have many infections, and its scientists say the large number of cases in Iran makes it a better place to run the clinical trials. Al Jazeera's Lucia Newman reports. Scientists are working round the clock at Havana's Finley Institute, named after the renowned Cuban epidemiologist who discovered how yellow fever was spread. The state-run institute has been researching and producing vaccines for decades. And its latest project is called Sovereign 2. 
Using recombinant protein technology, it's a promising and inexpensive alternative to the COVID-19 vaccines already on the market, according to Cuba's government. It's a difficult challenge to the extent that there's no other third world country that have done so, only us. Havana has signed a technological transfer agreement to soon begin carrying out 150,000 phase three clinical trials of the vaccine in Iran, where, unlike in Cuba, COVID-19 infections are rampant. The circulation of the virus in Cuba is not very high, so therefore we cannot perform a conventional phase three. So that's why, that's why we are planning to move to a, a, a large population already in the phase three. The Institute says it's collaborating with its counterparts in Canada, France, Italy and the Netherlands to test and eventually produce the vaccine. One advantage, they say, is that it would not require special refrigeration. Once the vaccine's efficacy and safety are proven, including for children under the age of 16, the entire Cuban population would be inoculated first, says Dr. Veres. Moving to a, to a commercial extension of this production for Soberana Du, we are planning, we are planning to, to have in the order of 100 million doses during the 2021. Despite its size and limited economic resources, Cuba's biotechnology industry has produced major breakthroughs, including the world's first vaccine against meningitis B. The goal now is not just to protect its own population against COVID-19, but to offer inoculation at a price that poor countries like Cuba can also afford. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera. Social media has been abuzz with videos of sharks in shallow waters in several islands around the southern Caribbean. Over in Antigua, the question being asked is, should you be concerned about shark attacks when you go to the beach? The issue has received heightened attention across the leewards after a woman was attacked by a shark in Ketitian waters. ABS's Jessica Russell spoke to a marine ecologist to find out. I would say not concerned at all. Marine ecologist Julio Camacho says Antiguans don't need to be worried about sharks. Shark populations are way down. They're highly threatened species, um, and they're always in our waters. I think the result of the incident in San Martin is that persons have been publicizing views of sharks a lot more, but sharks are an indicator of a healthy ecosystem. Earlier this month, a woman was attacked by a shark off the coast of St. Kitts. Last month, a woman was killed in a shark attack in St. Martin. However, Camacho says sharks aren't keen on humans. Sharks preferentially do not attack humans. Um, they don't find us as suitable prey items. I've been in the water with most of the shark species that we have um, in the Caribbean region, um, whether for doing research or recreation, whether it's diving or fishing. And normally they see you and leave you alone. I, I can guarantee that sharks see you way more often than you see them. Last Independence, Camacho had this stunning picture taken while at sea with a reef shark in the background. He says this was to raise awareness. Sharks are just as important as mangroves, as birds, as all the other ecosystems. And they actually, they help the ecosystem because they tend to remove the, the, the slower, the less able species, um, so like the older species, the ones that are not as fit. Um, again, this whole notion of survival of the fittest. And because of that, they actually help to keep the ecosystem functioning on a healthier basis. Jessica Russell, ABS News. While legislation on the decriminalization of cannabis in Grenada is expected to be brought before the Houses of Parliament before March 1st reading, Guyana is having similar conversations. A local drug treatment specialist says Guyana is unprepared for the removal of custodial sentences for small quantities of marijuana or the decriminalization of a specific amount as it could very well lead to increased use and addiction plus a breakdown in society. More from Tamika Rodney. 
For years, members of the Rastafarian community have been lobbying for the decriminalization of at least 50 grams of cannabis and for the removal of jail time for those found in possession. Even though the former APN UFC government in July 2019 approved a proposal to repeal custodial sentences for 30 grams or less of marijuana, the bill was never passed in the National Assembly. Nonetheless, the bill was approved by cabinet, added to the National Assembly's order papers, and will be debated and voted on. In a more recent separate attempt, the PPPC government also secured cabinet's approval and is slated to table a marijuana bill in the National Assembly soon, which outlines that the drug will still be illegal. However, persons found with it would not have to spend jail time. Even as the government and opposition work towards ensuring one of the bills is passed, Philip Drayton, one of the country's drug treatment specialists, holds the view that such a move should not be done in isolation of the permanent effects it can have on society. Drayton, who spoke with Nightly News during an exclusive interview on Monday, pointed out that much focus needs to be placed on four levels of interventions to prevent addiction and foster effective rehabilitation. Level one, he explained, is aggressive public awareness campaigns about the effects of using the psychoactive drug. The second level is considered as support groups. Narcotics Anonymous support groups is only functioning in one region here in, in Guyana. All other nine administrative regions are left out simply because it is functioned here in Region 4. Drayton also highlighted a need for residential services, facilities where persons who are in the fourth or fifth stage of drug misuse can live until they become responsible enough to be reintegrated into society. The drug treatment specialist opined that the rehabilitation centers countrywide where persons go to get a second chance in life requires more trained personnel to aid the full recovery of the patients. We only have a few rehabilitation centers at strategic regions and mainly in region four there's no other rehabilitation centers within all the other administrative regions uh, within guyana so to give a little leverage to a psychoactive drug like cannabis you're exposing members of society to a, a deeper psychological prison there's a lot of work to be done where uh, allied professional needs to be on board a lot of psychologists uh, uh, psychiatrists, social workers, drug treatment specialists, members of uh, social protection, etc. But the genesis of sending someone from the drug treatment court to the rehabilitation centers, we need to recognize and understand what are our objectives. Tamika Rodney reporting for the H GP Nightly News. That's it for tonight's regional updates. Stay with us for a reminder of tonight's top stories. A recap of this evening's headlines. Health Minister withholds details on the outcome of the first COVID-19 related death report. Curfew extended for a further two weeks. Expansion and refurbishment of Bishop's College on schedule for completion by March 2022. Victim of car scratching incident declines to pursue legal action against radio personality Aruna Neptune. Tam CC lists accessibility to tools for online learning and students no-show to classes as challenges facing the institution. In around the globe, Cuba partners with Iran to produce its own COVID-19 vaccine and concerns about sharks continue across the Caribbean region. In sports, the Super 50 Cup returns and Grenadian Devon Smith assigned as assistant coach for Windward Island Volcanoes. If you missed any parts of this newscast, a repeat of it will be broadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online at www.gbn.gd or check out our Facebook and YouTube pages for these and other top stories. I'm Kristalyn Lashington. That's the news. We'll see you again. Good night.
weekends 